Welcome to Tuesday Muse Day, everybody. It's a lot of background noise today. That's because the son is home from college and he's doing laundry. Just being honest. We're going to play a little more. Talk to you in a minute.
Welcome back, everybody. All right, it's time for another Tuesday Muse Day. I'm going to go over to the desk. We'll say hello. I've got some videos for you. Today's theme, check this out, you guys. The Sounds of Magic. All right, how exciting is that? So I'm going to be showing you some of these instruments that are the percussion instruments that we often associate with magic sounds in movies, TV shows, other, other things like that. Um, it's pretty fun. I've got some things. Some of these are, have already been in videos, but I just thought I'd group them together since it's a magical time of the year. <laughs> and I have some holiday stuff coming up for you a little bit. We're doing, um, wow, we got a lot of stuff. We got Gimme 5 stuff. We've got Reflections of Yanni. I've got two video features today. We'll do Q&A a little bit later. All that stuff. So much stuff. All right. I'm going to go over to the desk. Hang on. I'll be right there. See you in a second. Okay, let's see. Do we have audio? It looks like we do. Oh, got to change the camera. Sorry. That's the camera I want to see. <laughs> All right. Okay, welcome back, everybody. Hey, nice to see some of you familiar faces. Uh, <laughs> all right. Great. Uh, Roseanne Musser's here helping us out, um, kind of mediating, moderating. Cornelius is here. Lacey's here. Rebecca. David. Nice to see you guys. Um, so we, we've got a Gimme Five thing uh, coming up. And uh, get ready for that, but you don't have to worry about that yet. We'll, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, the first thing I want to do, I want to share with you, I've got two videos I'm going to show you today, two, two recorded videos. And uh, the first one is one that I posted, but you might have missed it. Um, it. It was me playing along with a track that a colleague of mine, Mark Scholl, well, I, I explained it in the video, but the thing is that tune is about to drop and it's been a while he's been making this. And I, so I'm giving you the link. And you can go check out what he's doing. But Mark Scholl's a drummer. We played in very metal band together. He's been having fun doing some collaboration videos with you know other musicians. He's doing some amazing stuff. It's really cool. If you like funk, kind of Tower of Power sort of stuff, then you would like it. But here's the, here's the tune. I'm just going to play you the video. I'll see you on the other side. And uh, enjoy this. See you in a minute. Hey everybody, um, welcome back. I just got done recording uh, a track for a friend of mine, actually an associate uh, drummer, 
who I used to play in Barry Manilow's band with, Mark Scholl, great drummer. He's now producing his own stuff, and I want to put a link later to this tune when it's ready. But if you look up Mark Scholl, I'll try to find his website and leave a link below. He's um, producing some collaborative tunes like I've done, like a lot of people are doing, especially during the pandemic. And he just invited me to play percussion on one of his tracks. Now, this track, I'm going to play you my part in a second. You're going to hear the tune. His tune's not done yet, so I'm just going to play you my part that I just recorded. But I wanted to share it with you since it's something that's going on right now in my little studio. So I played bongos. I played the shake hat with uh, some tambourine. And as you'll see in a second, I just went through, I did one take uh, with all of these parts. And then, you know, he'll edit it together and EQ and mix it and everything like that. But uh, I'm just going to show you my part. Of course, when he's done, you'll see the whole band. And I'm sure it'll be great. So enjoy this. Uh, I'm going to play you, like I said, his track with my track on top of it. I'll try to make it sound good, but it's this is not a mix. It's not a finished product by any stretch of the imagination. But I thought you'd be interested to see what it looks like, you know, at least when I was recording my part. All right. See you soon. All right, here we go. Audio. One, two. <laughs> Okay, I decided to cut that a little short because it kind of goes on and on. And uh, we have stuff we need to do. Mainly, I want to show you these instruments before we get to some of the other stuff. So anyway, Mark Scholl, Screaming Tigers. I put the link up on the screen. Uh, so go check out his stuff. And the one that I played in that tune, like you said, is about to publish. It's not published yet. He just sent me a preview link. And it's, a, it's pretty cool. It's amazing. He's got some great musicians on there. And me. Uh, all right. Let's look at uh, some of these instruments I have for you guys today. And uh, some of these you can include in the Gimme 5. Um, but 
I'm gonna add some later. So this is not the Gimme 5 selection, this is just instruments. So, all right, where do we start? Let's, um, I think in terms of magic sounds, I wanna start with this, and, uh, and I'll show you, I've got two of them, obviously. So this is what we call a bell tree, not to be confused with where bats hang out. That's a bell free, I think. Bell tree uh, is just, it's a, it's a stack of graduated bells. I know it kind of makes you want to have a shawarma or something right now, doesn't it? <laughs> but you guys know this, this is a magic sound. This is one of our magic sounds. Did you guys ever play a, a game? It's an early computer game called Radical Castle. It was, I think it was built on hypercard stacks or something. It was old, old game. And uh, I just remember they had this kind of met when you put a spell on somebody or something. All right, so there's that. But what we really want is this. <laughs> and I had, I used to have this on a clamp and I could, this thing is so heavy. It's gotta be like, that's where I should, I should work out with this. Save some money on the gym. So check this one out. This is, this is pretty awesome. And it does make a difference, like the kind of beater you use. Wow, okay, that's, yeah, you don't want too much of that. Uh, so that's that's the giant bell tree. So that, again, what I like about this is, I gotta rest it on my leg. <laughs> my shoulder's getting tired. Is that you can play it with a triangle beater and you can just kind of randomly, let's get the right side. I mean, you can play sections, right? Three three areas of tonality. Um, but one things one of the things I like to do is kind of like I did in the track uh, that we played earlier. But these are awesome. They're not cheap, right? Because you can imagine. I mean, this is you know how many hotel counters you had to go to to collect all these. It's a lot. Um, but the, yeah, these are, and this is a nice one. This is, these are brass, really nice quality. You can hear the difference as opposed to this one, which is okay, but it's, you know, it's not quite as nice. All right, so um, I guess I'll leave these over here. So that is the bell tree. Another sound that's kind of similar. Uh, this is a, this was a gift, and this is a JW standard um, chime, kind of a set. I think they call these energy chimes. Very precise. And this one actually, we can play a Christmas song on that one. Um, same kind of thing, a little different, right? But still a pretty magical sound. And a lot of, you know, definitely a lot of high, uh, a lot of transients, a lot of sounds going on there. Uh, another magical sound, of course, is the Tibetan bells, sometimes called finger cymbals. These are, or zills, these are actually different. Another magic sound. Let me know if the sound is too loud. It's pretty loud where I am in my headphones, but yeah, that's another, that's another one. And then, of course, our good friend, the triangle, uh, another magic sound. You could work it into something. You know. Um, and by the way, I wanted to show you guys this triangle because this triangle, I don't know how much time we have today. This triangle, I just discovered, rings so long, it's insane how long this thing rings. I'll give you a sample. Uh, so this is a little, just a little like kind of brassy, bronzy triangle that I got, but check this out, you guys. And I have it hanging on a zip tie. So there's a clip and I got a little tiny zip tie and I put it on there and, and for some reason it just really likes this setup. Check this out. Actually, I have, you know what, I have to turn something off on the audio. I have a, 
what's called a noise gate. Let me turn it off. All right, I usually set up my mics with noise gates so that when the volume goes down to a certain level, it actually shuts off the signal. So that's why you, it's meant to cut out sort of background noise, but I just turn that off. So you shouldn't have any interruption. Check this out. Moving it closer to the mic. It's very quiet, but it's still going. So it, that's going to go another 30 seconds or more. It's kind of crazy though, right? I don't know. Some instruments just have a lot of, a lot of ring. All right. I've got another video, actually it's a holiday video, to play for you, uh, but that that's our, oh, how could I forget? Wind chime, or mark tree. That's what I wanted to play. Uh, the mark tree is, we call these, a lot of people call these wind chimes, they're actually called mark trees, why? Because this arrangement here, uh, it's not a wind chime. Wind chime is what you have on your porch, right? That's the hanging circle. What Mark Stevens did, he's a LA, it was a studio musician, LA percussionist, probably back in the 70s, maybe 60s, but it, at least by the 70s. He said, oh, wouldn't it be nice if we took some of these chimey chimes, you know, and we just arranged them in a row so we could play them easy on studio sessions. We could pack them in a bag and it's not like a circle. And then we can do different things this way. So he basically invented this. He's one of the first guys to do this or the first guy. And he would bring these things to sessions and people would start calling them the Mark Tree because Mark had them, he had them, and so it became the Mark Tree. So that is, as far as I know, a true story. Um, and so the Mark Tree is the chimes hanging on a piece of wood or whatever, you know, sideways, a graduated thing like this. That's the Mark Tree. This is a beautiful one. This is an ohm chime. You cannot, I don't think you can get these anymore. That's a double row ohm chime. Uh, but nevertheless, another magical sound. All right. Okay, I'm gonna go over to the desk, play you another video, and get ready for the Give Me Five lineup. Hang on, be right there. All right, I'm recycling. Hold on, I left my mouse pad, or my trackpad. <laughs> All right, you guys, uh, this, this Christmas, this is another, I'm just going to play the video we did last Christmas. It's called This Christmas. Um, and this um, features a few musicians. I'll just play it for you, you can see. And uh, here it is, enjoy. I'll be right back.
Okay. We're back. Give me five. So here's some of the things I have for you to choose from. I'll go over them really quick. We've got the Tinkatong D minor. We've got the mini, the Zenko element, the little tank drum. They go together. Uh, that's your tune stuff. Uh, metallic sounds, we just had the bell tree. Yes, I will add sleigh bells. How could I not? Um, since we talk about night, we've got the cricket sound. That's the cricket. Uh, let's add a block. Wood block or temple block, either way. We'll add the triangle because we have it and it's nice. Um, also, over here, Kashishi, Shaker, usually one or the other, uh, Agogo, Agogo Bells. And let's, we can add these in, the chimes. Depends on what kind of music you want, you know. And of course, yes, we can add the uh, mark tree, and that's for the percussion stuff. So try to remember that. <laughs> you don't have to re just you can just suggest uh, things that you remember too. Uh, we've got cajon, of course, and then we've got a conga drum over here. I do have bongos over here somewhere. Uh, so let's just say congas, bongos, cajon and then this stuff. So what the, how this works is that you guys, um, you're gonna pick somebody, or you, you can all pick a list of five things. And then you're gonna give me the five, I'll give you a high five. So I will do live looping from five instruments that you one of you picks, all right? And again, I'm gonna ask Roseanne to pick somebody. See, that gets me off the hook. Um, so she'll pick somebody. So you have until the end of the Reflections of Yanni, which is coming up right now, to come up with a list, suggest it, put it in the comments, and then Roseanne will pick somebody. And then when we come back after Reflections of Yanni, I will do it. We'll do some live looping with your instruments. Also, you could have flute as one of your instruments. You could have Native American style flute. Um, and let us know what style like at least like slow, medium, or fast. Uh, if you want to suggest a mood or a style, that's fine. I'll do my best, no guarantees. But, and, and then also if you would like to dedicate it to someone or a group of people, a cause, anything, let us know. That's up to you, that's optional, all right? Uh, I'm gonna go back over to the computer now because we have we have some photos to look at, and uh, that's it. So if you have any questions, put them in the uh, comment, put them in the chat right now. But that's a give me five. Make a list of five, and we'll we'll do one of them today. All right, hang on. Okay, all right. Let's go to. Reflections of Yanni. Ani, Ani, Ani. All right, here we go. I, you know, I just want to share a few photos with you. This is very casual, but I kind of like this one because Karen's right there. Right there. And I kind of like the look on her face. It's, she's very, con Karen is very focused. And uh, she, she works so hard. Her work ethic is crazy. As you can imagine, uh, she's done a lot of work to get to where she is. And so, you know, she's there she is out in the sun. Um, this was a rehearsal, I think, with a pickup orchestra, probably. Oh, no, this was with our orchestra. Sorry. So this would this would have been like 1994. Uh, my fourth and, and final year with the Yanni Band. And uh, we traveled with a small orchestra that year. The first two years, we didn't have an orchestra at all. We had the band, which is like a nine-piece band, and then I think an eight-piece band. Uh, then we had pickup orchestras in 93 before we did the Acropolis shoot, right? So we would just go to a city, rehearse with the orchestra. They'd call in like local orchestra, rehearse with the orchestra, then do the show. That was fun. <laughs> Every day, long rehearsals. Um, so bringing our own orchestra solved uh, some issues. Of course, then it like tripled the size of our entourage. 
so it was fun though. We had, we had a good time. Um, I actually wanted to share with you the next photo, which is in New York City uh, at the Rockefeller Center. There I am trying to navigate the ice. Uh, you know, I live in California, so give me a break. Anyway, I, I, I do okay. I, I can get around without falling. Um, it looks like I'm about to start a speed skating match right there. Um, yeah, so this is Rockefeller Center uh, in the spirit of snow, in the spirit of Christmas, winter, uh, some iciness. I thought that was fun. And um, we also, the band, especially early on, but even later with the big orchestra, we used to go out to dinner a lot. So here's the scene. And I, I don't know why, I don't know why Yanni looks like that, uh, but he's probably tired. Um but there's Charlie Adams, no, this way, Charlie, and then Shardad Rahani. So this would have also been 94 because Shardad was our uh, our conductor and arranger and also violinist. You remember him from, oh no, this could have been 93 actually because he was in the Live at the Acropolis playing opposite Karen, who was also there um, apparently being entertained by something Yanni's saying. But uh, yeah, so this was a dinner, and uh, there's another shot of a dinner. Now, I can't explain what's happening in this photo. Maybe we need a caption for this one, but he, that guy, I don't remember his name, but he was one of our truck drivers or bus drivers. I think he was the orchestra bus driver, or maybe a truck driver. And then the woman right below me, um, her name was Colleen and Colleen Lockler, and she's Heather Lockler's sister. That's true. And she was a she was stagehand. She was like a tech on our tour. And uh, they were both a lot of fun. We we would hang out with the crew sometimes. I think we were we were going to a dinner, and all the crew just decided to wear like tuxedos just for fun. Like the, it was not a requirement. Oh, and yeah, that's right. He was just showing that he was wearing shorts. That's what that is. So he was very proud that he was wearing a tuxedo and he had black shorts on uh, and I guess work shoes or something. So that's that's kind of hilarious. But the crew, you know, we had we had fun with the crew. Um, nice people on the tour, which always makes a huge difference. I mean, you guys know the people you work with can really make or break a work scene, you know, the the environment. So that was fun. All right, that's all I have for uh, reflections of Yanni uh, today. I think that's enough. I almost showed you guys some other photos that are <laughs> pretty pretty out there. I, I didn't want to actually show them around this season because it's not appropriate. <laughs> I'm going to stop talking about that before I dig myself into a hole. Um, but I have some other photos. I don't know if I could put them on the live stream. Maybe Maybe those have to be on Patreon. We'll see. Anyway. It's time for Gimme Five. So um, I'm going to ask. So Roseanne, is that your choice? Just want to make sure. I guess it is, but we had some nice. Let's see. What do we got? So Lacey, I'm just going to read a couple. Lacey said, uh, Tinka Tong, Conga Cricket Shaker, Mark Tree. Yeah, in reggae style. Oh, okay. We'll make a note of that. Uh, oh, Jewel. Hey, Jewel. Jewel is uh, a colleague who is working with, well, we play well together as well. And she does amazing stuff with uh, monochords and sings. And she also plays those same instruments, Tinka Tong, Zenko, all that stuff. We Maybe maybe Jewel, leave, leave a link to where people can find your, your work. Um, Tinka Zenka, Woodblock Chimes, Beltry, Slow Dreamy Jam in 5-4. <laughs> that costs extra. No, I could do that. Dedicated to Mike Moss. Well, I'll tell you what. If um, I could still dedicate it to Mike Moss, no matter what we do. Um, and Cornelius said, Cajon, Bongos, Shakers, Sleigh Bells, Native Flute. Oh, that's interesting. All right. So I'm going to wait. It takes a second for for my uh, for the messages to come into my computer here. Um, oh, and Angel or Angel, um, Cajon, Bongos, Cricket. People like Cajon and Bongos. 
Uh, Cricket, mini tank, shaker bossa nova style. Yeah. yeah, that would work too. You guys have good suggestions tonight. I like it. You guys, I think these are well put together. You guys are, you know, well, I hope so. If you're a fan of the channel, I hope, I hope uh, you know, at least I and other people have influenced your musical choices. But uh, these are good. These are good sets. So I'm going to wait for Roseanne's choice. And uh, then I'm going to go play. Um, so I have to stay here, though, because I cannot. Well, I'll take my phone with me and I'll, I'll go get ready. Because I do have. Oh, OK. I have the, I have the person here. Let me go over here. Hold up. You know, one of these times I'm just going to have a setup where I don't have to keep moving around, but it's okay, right? It's okay. So I have it and it is my friend Jewel. So we're doing so that's this means I have to play in 5/4 now, I guess. I can do that. It's going to take a second. I got to set the the looper up for. Let me see. How do I do that? <laughs> I don't even know. No, I know. Let me see. That's not it. I got to go to loop. Nope, that's not it. See? Record. Somewhere there's a there's where you set the the meter. Let me see, it's gotta be in, where? Oh, beat, there we go, five, four. Okay, got it. Okay, so what are we doing? Tinka Zenko, all right, Woodblock, got it. Chimes, Bell Tree. Okay, so I'm gonna take some things away that I don't need. All right. And uh, and then this is slow, dreamy in five four. So we'll use the little the little bell, the little bell tree. Aren't the bell trees fun? I think they are. Okay. Um, so let me see a slow like. Yeah, I think sixty six. Is good. 65. Let's go 65. And all right. And this is dedicated to Mike Moss. Slow, dreamy. Okay, I want to switch mics. Let's see. Check this mic. See? Isn't that nice? Hello. This is a, a, a nicer mic over here. So I'm going to use that in honor of Mike. I don't have any moss, but if I did, I would use that. Um, all right, let me think a second, get in the mood here. Let's start with, let's start with the, the mini Zinco. I'm gonna hold it up over here so I can access them. Get the mic working. All right, here we go. Wish me luck.
Okay, sorry you guys. Every once in a while, my looper, <clears throat> it develops a mind of its own and it just decided that the, what? Sorry, I'm still learning how to use this. Um, I don't know. I don't know why it does it, but it just, it didn't loop. It's a looper. <laughs> it's in your job description. I don't know why it's, okay, let me see if I can. Uh, all right, let me see. Loop. Sorry, you guys. I usually don't have this. Uh, I don't usually have these problems. But something uh, did did not something was not set up right, and then it, it just it just wouldn't it wouldn't loop. So I was like, I don't know, I gotta stop. See, Jewel, this is what happens when you ask for five four. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's okay. I want to do it. Um. All right. Well. Yeah. Oh, met, so yeah, it was on 16 bars. What? It's supposed to be on four. <laughs> I usually do a four bar loop. Wow, that was on 16. That's crazy. All right. Okay. I think we're good. I just picked the one track that was like set to 16 bars. Unbelievable. Okay. Uh, let's try again. I will start again. <laughs> It's live, you guys. It's it's okay. It's all good. Nobody's getting hurt except me. <laughs> all right, here we go.
Alrighty. Alrighty. Okay. Um, Let's switch mics. I made it through. <laughs> thanks for the, thanks for the suggestion. That that was a uh, that was good. It was once I got going. I had my. Uh, by the way, this is the Koshi chime, and uh, I I often keep it just hanging up. And I have a whole bunch of stuff up here with, for lights and cameras and mics. And I, I had it hooked on there, and when I brought it down, this little guy, the striker was like around one of the tines, so uh, I had to, I had to untie it, <laughs> untie it. Get it? Uh, yeah. But we made it. By the way, you guys. So the this Koshi chime. I talked about this before on another video, but this Koshi chime and the Zenko. Uh, the little one, the element, and the this tinkatong are all tuned together. It's a D minor set, and there's um, there's other instruments that go with this as well. Um, but right now, and and thanks, Jewel, for for dropping in today. And you guys can go check out Jewel's work wherever she's leaving the link. I'm gonna go back over to the desk. It's time for Q and A, uh, quick update, and then and then we're we're out. So um, yeah, thank. But thanks for that suggestion. That was I I, I hope I. I uh, managed to create something that was uh, along the lines of what you had maybe imagined or hoped for. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go back to the desk. Hang on. All righty. Let's get to... We're just going to do Q&A. I mean, I don't know. Do we have... Do we have cues? Do we have cues? Let's see. If you if you if you don't have questions, that's fine. Um, you can also uh, make some requests. And um, thanks for your comments, you guys. I I uh, appreciate that. I know I I've, I've been wanting to make some um, music that is for sleep um, to to facilitate sleep. I noticed there's tons of that on YouTube. There must be a reason uh, people are having a hard time sleeping. Um, and uh, I as well last night I woke up in the middle of the night I couldn't fall back asleep. So sometimes actually what puts me to sleep is listening to some podcasts. Sometimes sometimes the talking. 
puts me to sleep. But I I could use some uh, you know meditative music too, and th those are great instruments for that. Um, so uh, Lacey asked me, do I have any dogs? We dog sit. I used to have a couple dogs of my own. Made them. They made it like fifteen years. It was awesome. I had a Dalmatian and a Pitbull Lab mix. M amazing dogs. Um, since I got married and we moved here, we all like dogs, but we decided not to start over, you know, with another dog. Instead, what, what I, um, what we do is, uh, we dog sit. Uh, and so we have a bunch of dogs. We have all kinds of different dogs that come visit. So, uh, that's what we do. Yeah. We're, we're dog people for sure. Um, Cornelius is asking, <laughs> what do you do to keep fit? Oh, Roseanne, I could see the questions in over here. Yeah, you don't have to necessarily pass them all on in the uh, in the chat, although I appreciate that. I mean, in the we're using Messenger outside of this, um, but I can see them. It's okay. Um, what do I do to keep fit? I've you know, fortunately for me, um, I've banked a lot of fitness over the over the years. I was very active when I was younger, and um, there's a, there's a guy online. I mean, he's on, he's not only online, obviously, but there's this guy that he, I just love this quote that he came up with. He said, or saying, he said, you have to bank health like you bank wealth. And uh, fortunately I banked a lot of health early. I, I did a lot. I used to be in gymnastics and I've always been active in sports and working out and stuff. But lately I got to tell you, I haven't been doing too much. I did get an e-mountain bike, which I intended to ride more. I just told my stepsons today, they asked me what I want for Christmas. And I said, I want something that's going to jumpstart me back into working out regularly. Cause I, I just, I can't find something that I, that, you know, like I tried running a little and I just, you know, I get going a little and then I kind of slack off. So I need to, um, find something that I can do that's, um, you know, regular and, um, all I've been doing lately is like doing music and working on restoring old cars, uh, which which actually does involve some fitness, believe it or not, and then working on the house. Uh, but that's not that's not enough, and that's not that fun from a fitness perspective. Um, uh, let me see. Oh, okay, so Rosanna has a question. Um, in watching Live at the Acropolis, I felt that Yanni really appreciated all his musicians. What was your experience? Um, yeah, I think I think Yanni chose all the musicians, at least in the band. I mean, the orchestra, he didn't have as much say in choosing. But, you know, he yeah, he definitely appreciated all the talent uh, that was there. And there was a lot of talent on that stage. Um, Yanni's an interesting guy because he's kind of like self-taught. And so all of his musical knowledge and skills are sort of in the Yanni bubble, you know, which, which has pros and cons. I mean, he, a lot of his music is, is unique. You know, he come, he comes up with his own, he has his own sound, which is cool. Um, but you know, he doesn't read music and he doesn't necessarily play like any other styles or jazz or anything. So even, the fact that a lot of us could do those things, I think he was intrigued with that. And he, re he respects that, you know, respected all the musicians and he would, you know, he'd ask our opinion and we'd all have input and, Especially in my seat, because um, I designed all my own parts, basically, except for what had already been recorded on the records, which was mostly just using samples of percussion on his earlier music. So I had uh, really an, an open, you know, blank canvas on which to paint, um, musically speaking. So that was nice. But yeah, Yanni was cool. I mean, he could he could be a little bit of a of a diva. But then, you know what? I mean, it was his show. I mean, I, so I worked for a lot of people and they're, I mean, they are divas because they're divas. <laughs> like, they that's the position they're in. And I think it's okay to, you know, demand high, as long as you're respectful of people, you know, you can be, you can be a hard ass boss as long as you're respectful of the person, right? Um, so, I, and I would say for most most of the time, uh, Yanni was, was, was cool and he would hang out and stuff, you know? So, um, how do you re research native dances of various nations to then present it to people together with music? You know, I, um, 
have learned some dances directly from people from other nations, um, such as I learned a Native American dance. I've I've learned some folk dances. Uh, I've learned some a lot of dances through um, professional development opportunities, like uh, taking trainings and workshops, like Orf Schulberg, uh and other workshops. You know. Um, and I, I don't do a lot of dance. I don't do a lot of movement. I do some, a little bit. And a lot. And some of what I do is actually just creative movement, uh, like improvisation-based or what we call referential. So like creating, you know, something based on something else. Um, but uh, I also, as a facilitator, and I, this is something I teach when I teach facilitation, is that I remember that people in my groups um, know things and and they like to share things and they have skills and they might know a dance and things. So some of the things I do might involve um, asking people if they have a dance to share, you know, um, because as a facilitator and some of you may facilitate music, whether you're a teacher or, or a facilitator, um, you know, you just know that people... People are smart. People are talented. People know stuff. And so you can just ask your group members. And that's a nice way to actually uncover some um, interesting material, dances, and other stuff that, that people can do in a group. Uh, any suggestions for first drums for toddlers? Um, you know, honestly, uh, here's the thing. I, I'll get to that in a second. Uh, I'll do my best to address that. But the thing is, toddlers, um, now the drum companies, you know, they make little tiny drums. Like they'll say make they make kids djembes or kids congas or kids bongos. T typically and traditionally, you know, young, very young children don't play drums, hand drums. Um, yes, can they walk up and, you know, like bang on the drums? Sure. But I'm saying they usually don't play things that require like um, – you know, that kind of skill until they get older and even get their digital, meaning their finger uh, movements going, which is usually around the, the age of uh, eight or nine. Um, that's when they start recorder, for example, and playing things like they're doing this. And so even hand drumming um, does require a certain amount of coordination. If you'll notice like infants, toddlers, they they often just will play like with what we call, what we call a parallel hand motion. So they'll play like this together. They can't even do this yet, except, you know, if they grow up in a family, you know, or a culture where there's a lot of that going on or they have special teachers, you know, like whatever, like they're a little Mozart playing violin when he's four. That's, but that's not what we're talking about in general. Um, I, I, what I think is a great place to start for toddlers and young children is just to start with dancing and singing and movement, moving to the music so that when they get when they get an instrument in their hand, they already know kind of like what they're going to play or what they're going for. They already are familiar with the music rather than giving a child a drum and then saying, okay, let's play music on this. Now, that being said, I don't, I'm not saying that children can't bang on drums. Of course they can. So if you're going to, if you're going to get, if you want to get a drum for a, a, a toddler, I would say something that is, I'm going to tell you the same thing I just recommended for my 97-year-old dad. My stepmother asked me, he, she said, he's been tapping on stuff. Hey, maybe I'll get him a drum. She said, I might get him a set of bongos. What I suggested was that she get a darbuka or a doombeck because it, you don't have to tune it. It's got round edges. It's, there's no hardware. There's nothing sharp on there. It's lightweight. It's easy to handle. It's got a very gratifying sound. Um, so I would recommend the same thing, like a little, a little doombeck and children can play them like mini djembes. You know, they can just straddle them, sit on the floor, play it sideways. I, I would say like a small doombeck would be my first choice, not a set of bongos. Bongos are kind of heavy. They don't sound good flat on the floor. So if you're putting things flat down on the floor, especially if it's carpeted, not going to sound good, but a doombeck you could put sideways. You could play it in a little chair. Um, and they're just lightweight, portable, all that stuff. So I would recommend that as a start. Um, and then if you wanted to have a drum that you could play with a mallet, maybe like a paddle drum and a mallet. But if you're talking hand drum that you play with your hands, I would say like a little darbuka. Um,
Okay. And Lacey wants to know uh, what DAW, what digital audio workstation am I using? Right now I'm using Logic Pro, which is the one that comes on Macs. Uh, I like it a lot. I'm I'm actually in the process of uh, mixing some music. I was just recording today, actually. I'm, I have a video I'm going to share uh, with you guys uh, coming up soon. It's another collaboration Christmas tune. So I was just recording... Uh, today, as a matter of fact, a little bit earlier, sleigh bells <laughs> and other things. All right, we're going to wrap up in a you know pretty soon. So if you guys have any other questions, um, let us know. But I do want to say thanks for, I don't know if she's still here, but Jewel, yeah, Jewel, thanks for stopping in. I know you're on the East Coast, so it's, it's later. And thanks to everybody, you guys, Angel, Lacey, Cornelius, um, Ravel, if I'm saying that right, hopefully. Uh, Roseanne, of course, for hosting. And Rebecca, um, I appreciate you guys stopping in. David. Um, yeah, so this is fun. Let us know what you guys want to see in the future, what you want to hear. Uh, I'll, I'll, we'll work on the Give Me Five thing, uh, but I, I, I hope that's fun for you guys. I, I have fun doing it because it's challenging. Today was kind of more challenging than normal. But um, but that's just the way it goes sometimes. Thank goodness the audio is still working. Um, oh, and Mart is it Martelli Martillo Martello from Portugal. Thank you. Nice to see you. And I have been watching the World Cup, so sorry about. I think they, I think they got eliminated. Right? Was that a few days ago? Uh, um, but anyway, go teams, whoever you're rooting for <laughs> at this point, you know, the U S is out, so that's okay. Um, I, I find all the teams, uh, very intriguing and I appreciate the talent very much. So that's another thing that what I've been doing for, for recreation lately is watching, uh, the football. I don't know if you guys are into that or not, but it's pretty amazing. Okay. Thanks everybody. We're going to, um, wrap up, uh, and we'll see you next week. We're, we're moving right through the holidays, so not, we're not taking any Tuesdays off. Tell your friends and colleagues to drop by um, uh, on a Tuesday e uh, evening. And uh, if, you other, if, you, if, you miss, um, the, uh, if you miss one, you can uh, watch it later. You know, these are all streamed, and then you can watch them afterwards. So, all right. Appreciate you guys. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Roseanne, again. Um, I do have a little delay from your comments, so I'm, I might not see all of them by the time uh, we sign off, but I appreciate you guys. Come see us at patreon.com slash Kalani. Also, this uh, coming Sunday is our percussion hang with Miranda. Uh, that is for patrons, so you do need to be a patron to get the Zoom link, because that's on Zoom. Miranda is just such a wonderful person and player. We're looking forward to hosting her. And uh, so do that as much as you can. And, uh, you know, I mean, <laughs> what was I just talking about? <laughs> Try to join us if you can. Uh, and uh, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, and whatever you celebrate, however you celebrate. Um, if I don't see you before, uh, then have a good one, and we'll see you after, and we'll see some of you in the new year, and we'll see some of you uh, this Sunday morning for that. We're also doing uh, Zuma flute alongs, and we're doing two this two. Usually, it's the second and fourth Saturday, a uh, Sunday this month, uh, because Christmas falls on the weekend. We're doing uh, our our second Zuma flute along of the month next Sunday, right before, right after the percussion hang. All right. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next time. Take care. Good night.